everybody. Welcome to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew Weber. I'm joined by Martin Burke. How you doing, Martin? Well, I'm doing well, Matt. How's yourself? It's but I, I'm out of practice. I don't remember how to do a podcast. It took me a while to figure it out. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, oh, no, so, yes. Yeah, rummaging around for the microphone, to be fair. I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's just been a while since we've done a show. It's all right. It's, stuff happens. Um, so, uh, you been doing anything cool on Linux lately? In short, no. Um, still under lockdown here. They're lightening the restrictions, so I've been try- trying to escape my hole and get out in the garden and do some things. I have dusted off my Pinebrook Pro, though, and in the hopes I could do a bit of work outside. Um, so, I mean, I probably will stick another distro on it, but currently it's running Manjaro. It's all updated fine, but... If it isn't broke, don't fix. I think Manjaro at the moment uh, is about the best for the Pinebook Pro. Uh, just a quick note, I think they're releasing some for you guys, or maybe to your keyboard. I've, I think they've put some pre-orders, so if you want to um, get a Pinebook Pro, if you um, hop onto the Pine64 website, I mean, it, it's the best bang for the book you're going to get, to be fair. I'll take a look at That's it. M- I wish you had more RAM. Yeah, that's what I think I'd... I don't know whether to sell it, get a good price for it, because, I mean, it literally does sit here, doing nothing. I'll get it out now and again, and just wait for the next iteration of it. But, no, it's not too bad, to be fair. For for what we use it for, it's fine. But, yeah, I know what you mean about the RAM, but... Just gotta have less tabs open, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I won't be able to do my video editing. What do I, look, you know? <laughs> no, no chance. Um, I, th- uh, I think I think it was how about Jason. You? And, was no, it Jason sorry. Evangelo that did the? He tried to do um, Caden live on like the Raspberry Pi or something. That was fun. Uh, so Ooh. I did my first live stream this week on the YouTube channel, which was a disaster. Um, I mean, what it, it went fine, but the audio was horrible. Uh, and during that time, I looked at the at awesome window manager for the first time, and mm-hmm. I cannot get my head around Lua like at all. <laughs> like it, it's just completely beyond me. It was that's where really the disaster came in because I was just looking at the docs for awesome, which is written in Lua, right? And I just couldn't figure it out. I mean, granted, it was my first time, so I, I didn't haven't spent any time with it beforehand. So maybe if I spend a little bit more time with it, but I think Lua is going to be one of those. Um, languages that I just can't get a hold of, kind of like Haskell, which is what Xmonad's written in. I, I just couldn't get my head around them. So that, that's what I've been messing around with. I've also been scripting a little bit, uh, but I'll talk about that a little bit at the end, because I actually wrote a script that I'm using as my app of the week this week, so that, that's something. Oh, cool. Well, I see a certain YouTuber who's bigging you up. Yeah, yeah, this sort of tube mentioned this on the channel, which is crazy. went from... 400 subscribers before he did that, and now we're at 2,220. So, uh, and the main thing is that you you kept your subscribers that had tuned in because I'm. I'll do that. I'll oh, check out this channel. You'll go. Oh yeah, this is okay. No, actually, I'll unsubscribe. But you kept them and grown on it. So props to you for that, Matt. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been pretty good. I I was actually. I mean, <laughs> you should have seen because I I watch all of his videos, right? So. I, uh, you know, I watched it on my phone. I was like, you know, because he does one of those YouTubers you should watch every year. Like, like, yeah, this is cool. Like, there's no, no way. I, I didn't even think. I was like, well, I didn't think about, you know, well, maybe he'll mention my channel. Like, and then mm-hmm. I, what, what's great though is he, he, I was first on the list, and that kind of helped because the ones that were further on the list didn't get nearly as many uh, subs. So that was really good. Yeah. To be fair, I've got, yeah, I've, I do watch uh, DT. Uh, Mindy for the fact he, he talks sense and there's no drama. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why I like it. it. It gets to the point. Um, even though it, it is heavily arch related, I, I, I do like the guy who talks a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, great right. stuff. Now, with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump into the contact info. info. You can contact you can uh, contact us on Twitter at Linuxcast. I'm at MTWB. Martin's Martin tweet to you. You can subscribe to us on all of our feeds and stuff at thelinuxcast.org. 
that is going to get a website soon, I promise. Eventually. <laughs> I'll do it eventually. I, 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 I want to do a video on Hugo or Jekyll or one of the static website generators, but I just have not gone around to it. You can also contact us via email at the linuxcast at gmail.com. And you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I'd like to thank Devon, Zach, Marcus, Merrick, and Camp for being our patrons. Uh, thank, you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash linuxcast. This stuff is all out of order. I need to redo that. Um, <laughs> and you can subscribe, subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash linuxcast, uh, where you'll find Linux-related content every day of the week. Well, most days of the week. I've taken a couple days off now. I had a streak going. I started December 24th or 6th or something like that and did a video every single day yeah. until like March something. And then I took a day off because I was sick. So uh, now that the streak is over, I, I feel a little bit less guilty about taking a, a day off every now and then. So every once in a while you'll see not a, you'll see a, a video that's not, you know, a day that's not has, doesn't have a video on it, but... Most of the time, uh, there's a video every single day, and we do obviously a, yeah. a weekly podcast when we can. So, <laughs> all right. So um, every week we pick a link uh, of news-ish, news-ish uh, that we can talk about. So, Martin, what was your your link for this week? Gnome forty. Uh, so I mean, if you wonder, I think it's Fedora thirty four. If you um, mm -hmm. Sign up to beta, get that running. You've got GNOME 40, GNOME 40, whichever way that you want to say it. I don't know whether you've had the chance to have a look at this, but I'm quite impressed, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah I, 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 I really am quite impressed with it. To say that the, the baggage and the history of it all, GNOME, blah, blah, blah. But it looks modern. <laughs> Looks up to date. Reminds me, well, obviously they've nicked a couple of bits and pieces from KDE, but it, it just looks really smooth, fluid. I mean, it's going to be on the website, things like that. But I, I think a couple of YouTubers have um, I'm working my way through them. But I think um, it's a generic uh, thumbs up for it. What, what do you reckon on that? Right, so I did use it. I installed it. I installed Gnome. I installed GNOME OS on boxes and made a video on GNOME 40. Um, and I came to the conclusion that it's GNOME. So, uh, <laughs> all right, so I, here's what I think about it. I think that if you like GNOME and if you've been using GNOME for ages, you'll probably come across with your opinion about it because it, it, it will feel different to you because you've been using GNOME for so long. To me, it was yeah. just very similar to what GNOME has always been. They just moved the dock to the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's the way it felt to me. Now, but like I said, I've always been a KDE guy, so uh, KDE has gone through many changes in the last I don't know ten years. I mean, KDE three was like released in like what two thousand nine or something like that, and that was two thousand four, or or excuse me, it was KDE four was released then, then five came out in like two thousand fifteen. And while they share some similarities, like they've made visual refreshes, GNOMEs look the same forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, since GNOME 3 was released, this is what GNOMEs looked like. And I think if you've been using GNOME for a long time, like I said, you'll find that it does feel fresh because you, it, it does feel different. Now, I will say this: if you're in, you're one of those people who uses extensions a lot and you always use dash to dock to get your dock to the bottom, anyways. You're gonna probably see, feel like this is just the same old, same old. Now, you got, my impression was that it was slower than it has been because they've been going through GNOME for like the last two or three years and trying to make it faster again. It felt slow to me. Now, I did You've use got it in a, a decent machine, haven't you? Well, yeah, but it was in a VM, okay, yeah. and it's and it's beta software, so I don't really want to judge it. So I, I'll wait until it comes yeah. out, you know. On Fedora 34, I couldn't get Fedora 34 to install in a VM. I didn't try in boxes. I tried in, in VirtualBox, but um, so uh, I'll wait until it's final software before I, you know, make a final verdict. But it it just felt slower, whether or not that was because of the VM or because of yeah. you know, whatever. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's food for thought, right? I mean, obviously, I'll, I'll have a dabble, try it out. Um, 
well, it, it'll be new to me, so to speak. Yeah. So, I mean, if it fits in, but if it's going to be a a memory monster, then no. But yeah, yeah. we'll see. But I mean, Let, from what I've saw of it, it it, it looks at, well a lot slicker. Yeah, <laughs> the round, Let, rounded corners and everything. Yeah, see, that's what I thought when I when I first, when I just first saw the saw the announcement before I used it. I was like, oh, this is this is great. This is you know a, a whole new look for it. But it, it just I guess just the way it felt, it felt the same. The real question I have is what Ubuntu is going to do. So Ubuntu is not going to do GNOME 40 in the next release that comes out next month. But we should see it in the fall. So mm-hmm. now if we want to talk about a distro that's looked the same forever, <laughs> that yep. Ubuntu has looked the same forever. Now they've changed themes recently. They went from the um, whatever it was before to Yaru or Yaru, Yaru whatever. I don't know what that was called. Um, but... In terms of like layout of stuff, it's looked the same since like I don't know what 2004. <laughs> I mean, it's looked basically the same. It has the icons along the side and the bar along the top. That's yep. the way Ubuntu looks. Now, so it'd be interesting to see how they go through and implement some of the GNOME 40 things into good into Ubuntu. If they make a, a similar, you know, like uh, UI change, that'd be really, I mean, that'd be really cool if Ubuntu decided to do something a little bit fresh. Um, but I'm the guy who likes change, so it'd probably piss everybody off. <laughs> so that'd be interesting. Yeah. All right. So my link. Yourself. Yeah, my link is. Uh, I I debated putting this in there because. Really, I don't want to get into the whole Richard Stallman thing. I don't give a shit about. Oh, excuse me. I don't give. I don't care about Richard <laughs> Stallman, uh, like at all. I have no. Uh, I have no horse in this race. I don't. I don't care if he stays or goes. But he's back at the the FSF, and you got two factions within the Linux community. Some of them want to get rid of him again. Some of them are trying to keep him from getting canceled because the catch cancel culture. Um, the whole thing. So I just thought I'd put it out there and ask Martin, do you have any like opinion on the Richard Stallman fiasco? None at all, because no. it, I've literally uh, had my cake day the other way, with, uh, other day with using Linux. I looked at the date. I think it's about the the twenty fourth or something of March. Uh, so no, I don't know any of the history. It, 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 just having a quick check. Is he a Marmite type of person? You either like right, him or so, you so don't. R- Richard Stallman founded the GNU project. He founded the GPL license and he founded the FSF. So he's kind of like uh, the Linus Torvalds kind of type guy. And he's very, very smart. But he's also, uh, he has no social filter. So he's come out and said things about pedophilia and stuff like that that he really shouldn't have said. But those things were said, like, I don't know, 15 years ago. So people know this about it. It's not a secret that he's a weirdo. I mean, and he is. He's a weirdo. What he got canned for (laughs) a year and a half ago was saying stuff about that Epstein guy who uh, had a harem and was pimping out little girls or something. I don't know. Right? Uh, Stallman came out and said something about him, something about – he didn't really defend him. Or anything. He just said something about semantics or something, and that got everybody up in arms, and he, he was forced to leave MIT, which is where he was a professor, and he was forced to leave the FSF, but now he's back. And th- like I said, there's a whole brouhaha going on. I've tried – like I said, I, I, like every like Linux YouTuber, like um, the Linux Gamer guy did, made a video on this. DT video, did a video. Brody Robertson did a video. I decided not to do a video because, honestly, Richard Stallman's like 70 years old or something. I don't really know how old he is, but the the, the man's ancient. If if he gets you know canceled or whatever, that doesn't that's not going to affect Linux like at all. Like I mean, have your opinions on whether he should stay or go. Whatever, I don't care. Um, for me personally, I think that. <laughs> He probably should retire just to bring in some fresh blood, you know. <laughs> At this point, he's a he's a legacy. What is he What is he doing for? Like at least with Linus Torvalds, he's still in charge of a, like a the actual product. Like he's still pushing out the Linux kernel. Like he's been pop- popping it out for the last thirty years, right? I and mean, he's still doing stuff. 
if anybody asks, like, like, I mean, you're fairly new to Linux. I'm, fa- I mean, I've been using Linux for three years. I think if you've asked the majority of people who use Linux what Richard Stallman does every day in order to support the Linux, you know, ecosystem, they'd have no clue. <laughs> I mean, they maybe they know that he's part of the FSF, or maybe they know that he was a founder of like the GP, the GPL license or the GNU project, something. I don't know. But they're not going to know what he does now. I don't know that he knows what he does now, other than causes a lot of brouhaha. So I don't know. That's where I kind of where I fall on it. Like I don't, I don't, I don't care. And that is why I was, you know, uh, I thought about not even putting this link in there because it doesn't really matter. But I figured I should cover it somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was just flicking through having a read. You should yeah, de- definitely if, if you no really social care all, filter. <laughs> yeah, if you care all that much about his, reading some of his stuff that he said, it's all on Wikipedia, and he he said it like publicly and stuff. He said some weird weird crap. Um, like yeah, it's he's not, he's not necessarily he's like he's a weirdo. I mean, he's one of those guys who definitely should not be in front of a camera or in front of a microphone. He shouldn't. Yeah, just be behind the keyboard. Right, and just be coding or something. Not social media. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. One of those guys, just, you know. <laughs> just the way it is. Yeah. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into the main topic, which this week we're going to be talking about the things we do when we install a new distro. So, Martin, when you install a new distro after, after hopping, what do you do? Um, well, prior to that, I mean, I could say go to Distro Watch and check out, but. I do go to DistroWatch, obviously, and I just check mainly the new releases, see what's coming through. Um, usually your favourite YouTubers will be doing something, first look and all that. I check check through to about two or, th- two or three YouTubers just to get some sort of opinion. Let them do the hard work to save me doing the, the, the insult, so to speak. Um then I'll try out the distro, bang it on a USB or a VM, but I would stick it on a USB just to um, just to get a feeling of it. I know there's going to be a bit of a lag on the using the USB and whatnot. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll obviously install it. I mean, ideally it's best to have a spare drive. So what I'll usually do, I'll um, back up all my pictures to the cloud. Um, or a USB, and I'll just literally drag my home directory onto the spare drive, make sure everything's copied over, unplug the spare drive just in case. Obviously go through the install. Um, I mean, the, the hardest thing to do is to get your new distro set up to exactly what your workflow. I mean, um, if if you use do cinnamon and you're going to KDE, you'll just be there scratching your head for some time. Uh, what are your thoughts on where I've got to so far? Are you much the same? Yeah, when I cho- you know, I guess when I I've changed over the years. Like so, when I first yeah. started using Linux, right, I do the same thing. I'd go do like the research and stuff. But now I pretty much know what distros are out there, and they're all all things that I've tried before. Yeah, like the, what you mean. the main ones, right? So if I'm gonna like when I hopped last month, and I was just leaving Arco behind because I was having a problem with Python or whatever, I pretty much knew that I wanted to go to an Arch-based distro. So I just randomly pulled up ISO of one of the Arch-based distros and just tried it. So I think for for an old timer, it's a little bit different than. Now I should say. That it did try. Now that I've started the YouTube channel, I've tried more, um, uh, like, not not necessarily oh, less popular comfort, ones, so. right? But yeah. ones that I haven't tried before, like n- ones that are new f- to me. And then yes, I'd go to DistroTube all the time and see. Uh, that's like that's how I got to use MX Linux for the first time because it's at the top of DistroWatch all the time. So uh, yeah, I've I've do the DistroWatch thing. Yeah. Right, so once I've installed, I mean, I am on uh, Mint at the moment using the Cinnamon. 
I mean, previously I was on KDE, but I was doing a lot more Linux stuff. Um, so, I mean, I, I will in install um, Redshift to, just to reduce eye strain. So that just goes with the phases of the, your light levels and just reduces the, the glare and the uh, blue light, I think it is, mm -hmm. late at night. Just just because there's, there's nothing worse than frying your eyeballs late at night watching YouTube or chatting about. I'll always um, download a clean copy of Firefox. Uh, I do use a sync, so I'll log in to get all my bookmarks back up and extensions running. Um, I do install um, Time Shift as well to take regular snapshots. I mean, I'll do, I think it's something like two weekly and I'll do two daily and just keep them running so I've got anything to fall back on. Um, I'll install web apps as well so I can stick my YouTube on there without Google spying on everything and, and shopping. I, I don't ever really log into Google from my um, my browser of choice. I mean, I've usually got two running. I've got browse, uh, Brave and Firefox. So I'll install web apps and Rambox I spoke about in the previous um, podcasts. It's just basically containerized systems. So I've got um, WhatsApp, Outlook, Gmail, um, Skype. Skype played up the ones, so I got rid of that. Uh, banking if I wanted to stick that on separately and then just as I go along I, I will install programs as and when I need them I mean when I do shift to distros I must admit like everyone I, I do like a light distro I mean I know they've got to in include this or you're used to this program and you've got that and you've got to go through all the pain of that free software that you've you've got reinstalling a different version but yeah um, that's mainly how I do it and how, how I like to start my, my new distros I mean how, how, what are your thoughts What do you just install as and when you need or do you just do one massive install of all your main programs well so I'm always quite surprised about how few programs I actually need to download when I yeah. hop um, there's only like five or six. I need, you know, I need Firefox, I need uh, LibreOffice, and I need Kden Live and Audacity. Those are really the main graphical ones that I use. And then there's a whole bunch of terminal ones, obviously, that I have to install. Yeah. Um, but the big thing that I always download is uh, my dot file. So I always go to my GitHub page and uh, download the backup of my dot file, so I have all my window manager key bindings and stuff all right yeah, there all set up yeah right and um then i'll always go through and just install the few programs i need so like i said so i need firefox and LibreOffice and kden live and audacity uh and then i i always download like todoist and zim and uh i i do mutt wizard for for mail and I have a notion app and I have discord and and then and then the messaging apps that I try to avoid like the plague so I have whatsapp and <laughs> and telegram on my system now but I do not install those until I absolutely need them yeah I, I don't like them the, especially whatsapp whatsapp has a horrible app on Linux it's just not good uh, and I know there are third-party ones but they're all just kind of terrible uh, so other than that, that's like maybe like seven or eight apps that I install. Other than that, I mean, you got to remember, most of the time I install Arco. So Arco comes with a ton of apps installed. So most of the time, I don't have to do Firefox. I don't have to do um, Libre, or, yeah, Libre Office. Those are things are usually installed right from the beginning out of the box. And Firefox is usually the default browser on every Linux distro. So that's something yeah. that I don't, you know. Now, if I ever get around to actually switching away from Firefox to something, you know, more privacy, fo even more fo privacy focused, then, you know, it's possible that I'd have to go through and you know, install that. But I haven't actually done that, despite threatening to do so uh, over and over and over, over again. Yeah, and I 
log into my um, P Cloud account, mm. with what I was doing when I was um, hopping a lot, and I've got my um, text file with all my um, terminal commands on, <laughs> just to install my various software. But I just do it the lazy way and, and use the GUI and click install and do that. But previously, I used to have a list of my com- commands, and I used to. Uh, run the file to install it but yeah I'm a bit lazy like that I'm not, I'm not like you with, with your, your terminal guru <laughs> and that's about it really um, yeah. nothing amazing I mean I, I would say I mean I know we did a, a podcast about security and firewalls if I remember to click on the firewall wall I do I mean I usually do bottom click, just see what firewall is installed. But as I say, I'm on Mint, it's already installed. So just another click and it's up and running. And that's about it, really. Um, yeah. That's my bit done on that. Yeah, so what I've been thinking about doing is, in, is creating a bash script to just install the programs that I need for me. Um <laughs> But my yeah. thing is, I'm not sure if I hop distros often enough to care, right? So maybe when I first started out and I was hopping every two or three weeks, it would have made sense. But now, yeah, I have no intention of leaving what I'm on right now. I have all of my stuff here. It's working fine. I'm going to stick to it. Um, and that's a completely different, you know, outlook on Linux than what I had even a year ago. Like. Well, maybe not a year. Maybe like a year and a half ago. Because about a year ago, I switched to Arco for the first time. And then I used it for a whole year, like, without hopping. And then I hopped crazy and ended up back on Arco. So, um, like, maybe like a year and a half ago, this a, a bash script to install my programs would have made sense. Now I'm just not sure that I actually need it. Maybe it's just something I'd, you know, create just for fun and then put up on GitHub. That way, if I ever do hop, I have it. I can just, you know run it after I, you know, install. I don't know, that's yeah, what I think I'm, about. Yeah, it's what I did as well. I did my little uh, bash script that used to throw up errors because some of the stuff was out of date after a while and yeah. I had to go in and edit it and I just thought, back in the times when I was confused with all your various software stall names and this and that and, and trying to find you, I just did that. But yeah, just very lazy, just uh, use mm-hmm. the software stall of choice. Yep, and yeah. that's it. And I haven't hopped recently. I'm still on Mint, which is probably longer than I was on Mint last time, to be fair. But then again, I haven't done a a vast lot on it um, currently. So um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, is the way I'm looking at it currently. Yeah, well, I mean, you, I think I said I think I'm going to stay on this for as long as it possible. I think that's what ha- I think that's as you use Linux, you know, the longer you use Linux, the more apt you are to just find what you like. You know, you you, you get everything dialed in, and you don't want to leave yeah. unless it breaks. And even if it breaks, you spend you know at least a day trying to fix it before you say because hopping becomes a chore. I mean, even if you own and only install, you're, if you're like us, you only install five or six apps, and you have a script or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you still don't want to do it. <laughs> it just whereas hopping used to when you first used Linux, hopping seems like it's so much fun because it's all new and it's going to be exciting and you're going to learn a whole bunch of stuff and yeah, it's like going to get some work done. And you, yeah, but eventually yeah, you still want to. I mean, even if you just nuke and pave it and reinstall it, yeah, the same old, same old. As well. Yeah, it's kind of a pain. All right, let's go ahead and jump into apps of the week. Martin, what was your app? I've installed this. Um, have you installed this, sorry? Yeah, just now. Oh. I'm, I'm looking at it now. Oh, excellent. Right, so it's a bit of a cheat. It's not an app. It's extension of the week. It's called Dark Reader. Now, this is a dark theme for every website you visit. Now, you might go into random sites. I mean, I think Distro Watch. It's like an acid trip, whatever one of them is like. It goes a bit funky. So, I mean, you could turn it on or off and things like that. But there's, it, it's just spot on um, eBay, Amazon, things like that, uh, just to give you the um, the dark 
dark web page instead of your bright ones. I know, are you more of a dark mode? Do you switch everything to dark mode or do you just leave it as is? As much as possible, yeah, I use dark mode. Mostly because yeah, it helps me. Yeah, especially on my phone. Yeah, oh yeah, everything on the phone, as much as possible. Oh. Yeah, white just sears your eyes and makes you want to die. Yeah, but I mean, there's some webs. I mean, more and more websites have got it. You've got to click on it, but then it's still storing it in your cookies. Once you clear them, you, you log back in and you've got this yeah. bright white screen. But yeah, it's really good. I've been using it for the last three weeks. And you, you just forget about the funkiness on the odd couple of sites. Uh, you, you just carry on. It's just nice not to, I mean, to actually just see and, and read without blinding things on the other side, especially if you've got your ad blockers, so all the, the blocks the ads are gone I'm not sure if it's got a slight ad blocker in it, I don't think so but yeah, that's my app uh, well, not app I'm right. um, quite pleased with that how about yourself, what, what terminal related app have you <laughs> got for us? Huh? it is terminal related I know you're taking Get a out of but, it. you know <laughs> you, 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 Make fun all you want. This so this is actually a little bit of self promotion because I wrote this script. Oh right, interesting. Yeah, uh, I'm not a good bash scripter. I, I'm sure if someone who is actually like a really good bash scripter came along and looked at this script, they'd be horrified by how amateurish it is. <laughs> and, and I'll freely admit that, but it does work, and I've tested it in Ubuntu and on Arch, so this works. Uh, there are instructions on the GitHub, which I've li- linked in the show notes. Basically, what this will do is it will go through and it will download my setup on DWM with all the depend- dependencies that you'll need, run the script, and you'll be able to use my version of DWM out of the box. And it's really good. So um, the reason why I made this was because I've had a couple people ask on the YouTube channel how they'd go about getting my DWM, DWM setup. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Here's a script. It's so easy. I could do it, so I don't really know why you need a script. But you know, it's it's been created. I'm I've made a video about it. I'm gonna upload that today. Uh, so uh, it, by the time this goes up, you can actually go back to the channel and actually watch me run this script on Ubuntu and on Arch. So like I said, it works on both uh, and, and any related distros, obviously, and it's really good. Um, now, obviously. Just because you get DWM installed from the script doesn't mean you're going to know how to use it. So uh, that's something that I'm not going to help with. You're going to actually have to, you know, find a tutorial or something after you get it installed. But for the most part, it seems to be uh, something fairly easy that most people can pick up. So, yeah. Just one question. What's nerd fonts? Is this something I'm missing? Sounds right, so really do you, good. <laughs> right? Do you know what awesome fonts are? Um, okay. So, yeah, all right. So basically, nerd fonts are just a. Cl- uh, so awesome fonts are the fonts that have like little um, icons and stuff like emo- they're not really yeah, like emojis. Yeah, windings and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, kind of, kind of like that. But these are like a special brand. They're they're usually meant for Linux in, in the terminal in order to show icons like file icons and stuff like that. Nerd fonts are basically like that. Only they're it's a huge collection of fonts. That um, a lot of them are, are mono space fonts, but some of them are not. You know, um, it's like eight gigabytes worth of fonts. It's jeez. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. That's the reason why in the script I only downloaded the ones I needed because I didn't want to go through and say get. I, I didn't want to go through and get clone the entire repository. So it's just the four that you need, and you have to install those on your own. But um, yeah, that's what nerd fonts are. It, it just yeah, it, it just does the little the... icons. In the bar. Yeah, I was with you till the amount of uh, gig. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, they look cool. Best best recommendation for nerd fonts is just browse through the ones that sh- you know they have there and download them specifically instead of downloading the whole thing. Now I download the whole things every time I. Speaking of every time I hop, I always just dr- download nerd fonts every single time. The whole eight gigabytes. Uh, <laughs> it usually takes longer than installing the distro. I'm just going to put that out there. It definitely does. <laughs> uh, so that's, nice. that's the thing. It, it happens. All right. Uh, anything else to say today, Martin, or are we, are we done? No, not from my side. Um, All right. I don't know whether you want to put a call out. Oh, right. So Martin's leaving us. He has to go back to work. 
I don't know why he needs to do this work thing. I mean, obviously, the you know YouTube is where it's at. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, anyways, he's leaving us, so we are looking for, or I suppose I am looking for a, a new co-host. So um, if you uh, are interested in doing a weekly podcast, uh, I'm fairly fairly flexible flexible on times. I mean, Martin, we've taken many many weeks off here and there, right? I mean, you started in like, yeah. uh, I think you started in October. October was it? Yeah, Early I think October, so. October, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we, we made it a, a, a good portion of the year. Um, but anyways, I'm very flexible in time. We, it takes about an hour a week. If you have a microphone and you're interested in Linux, uh, give me a contact at the linuxcast at gmail.com or contact me on Twitter. Uh, that's uh, I Honestly, when Martin started, I hadn't really started the YouTube channel yet, so he had to contact me on Twitter to check my damn email <laughs> in order to see the email he sent me, which is hilarious. Um, I still have that email. <laughs> Like, like, and I still have the tweet. So, anyways, uh, yeah. If you're interested, give me a contact. Um, the next cast at gmail dot com. And Martin, you'll be sorely missed. I know. And anyone that's interested, um, you can do better than me, believe me. <laughs> but yeah, drop oh, well, well, line um, and talk well, Linux. It's for that matter, they fact. can do better than me too. I mean, <laughs> I mean, no, you I'm don't want anyone don't... better than you. You want you want someone just below you. That, that's the way to do it. But yeah, <laughs> it's just um, there's only so many Linux videos I can watch, and not that you can tell, but just recently it's just slacked off, um, and just crawling out my hole into the uh, brave new world now. So yep. yeah, yeah. Gonna hit it on the head for a time being. I may well obviously keep in touch, see it, see how it all goes. But yeah, by all means, uh, jump on board and um, either learn Linux or um, teach Matto to use um, the GUI. We definitely need to make sure we have a Mint fan. It's got to be a Mint fan because otherwise <laughs> we can't ha- we can't have two people here that um don't like. You Mint. can't have anyway. two arch fans. Right. Oh, oh, we, oh, we could. It'd be so much better. No. <laughs> I, I mean, come on, man. Definitely, your biggest flaw is the mint thing. I mean, come on. All right. All right. I think that's it. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Great stuff. Cheers. Take care, guys.